Hello, and welcome to Namaste Radio. I am your host, Marie Bernard. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are here with Eckhart Tolle, live on the air. Hello, Eckhart. Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Thank you. Good, thanks. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to let everyone know that uh, you have more questions that you would like to discuss after the show. Go to namastepublishing.com. There's going to be a discussion board open there where you can discuss the happenings of the show. Eckhart, um, you also have EckhartTolle.tv happening? Yes, that's right, yes. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the show, but I wanted to, to put that out there so I remember. And we have a limited amount of time, so I'm just going to jump right in with the questions, if that's all right with you. When you wrote The Power of Now and A New Earth, the world felt like a different place. A lot's gone on since then, and I'm wondering if there's anything that you'd like to add or amend to your teachings in the face of the current global climate. Well, the, uh, yes, the power of now came out in 98, if I remember. No, was it 98? If I remember correctly, yes, I think it was. And the new earth came out about six years ago. Yes, the world has changed since then. New challenges new problems. Uh, the, it doesn't really affect the essential teaching that's expressed in both books because the teaching does not address or seek to remedy or solve the problems out there in the world. The focus of the teaching is human consciousness and the world that we create we create out of our inherent state of consciousness collective consciousness so if we create a world uh, that seems to be full of insurmountable problems then that world has been created by us collectively out of a certain state of consciousness and so the focal point of the books and the teaching is a shift in human consciousness it, so it does not actually address any external problems because the way I see it is that all external problems are effect they are in the realm of effect now what I address in the books is the realm of cause and the cause is within each human being so I point out I've done so frequently that if you look at human history uh, it's a very sorry tale it looks like the history of insanity and anybody who doubts that I always say go to the just the 20th century is enough. Go and read a book on 20th century history and you see how insane it is. So how many humans have been killed by other humans, far in excess of 100 million. So the essential thing is the recognition that there is a certain uh, element or strong element of insanity within the human consciousness and so we create a world that is full of problems because of a dysfunction in our state of consciousness so the books really address that dysfunction in our state of consciousness and point to the possibility of a transformation of consciousness in each human being so not as a collective thing because the collectivity consists of individuals the change has to be carried out within the individual not I, I don't have any collective program so it's the individual and the first recognition of the individual is the individual needs to recognize his or her own dysfunctions in consciousness rather than always saying the world out there is so insane and other people are so unconscious and insane 
Well, the suggestion is to look within first. Is there any other elements of dysfunction or insanity in myself? So it's becoming aware of your inner life, which means your thoughts and your emotions. That's where it all starts. So you become aware of what kind of thoughts your mind generates. You become aware of reactive patterns in you that operate. You react against things and people and events. You become aware of deep-seated mental patterns that are often very negative. So the teaching then focuses on a new dimension that can arise in human consciousness, and that is the that is where salvation lies. When humans discover, the individual has to discover it within him or herself, that there is, in addition to all the thoughts that go through my head every day, the emotions that I experience, my reactions, my my whatever happens to me in the world, my physical health, uh, my life situation, my financial situation, my relationships what I usually call my life. Now that's, in addition to that, there is a transcendent dimension in each human being. If you don't discover that transcendent dimension, now I sometimes call it presence, or I call it awareness. Spiritual traditions have also pointed to that and have used different names to speak of it. If you don't discover that transcendent dimension in yourself, that that state of consciousness, the deeper deeper consciousness, whether you call it deeper or higher, it doesn't matter, it's a question of perspective. That's where, with the recognition of that dimension in you, the dysfunction dissolves. Without the recognition of that dimension within you, no matter what you do on the outer level, or no matter how you rearrange your thoughts, the the dysfunction will remain. So we come to the core then of the teaching, which has nothing to do really with any historical situation, because you'll see that essentially the same teaching was already expressed by the Buddha 2,600 years ago and by many other teachers. That nothing to do with any historical situation, if if there's no shift in human consciousness, then people, I'm sure, will continue to read a New Earth and the Power of Now. And um, just not not long ago on my Eckhart Tolle TV, I was discussing a book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, and that was written 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and we are still reading it now, and it's still relevant <laughs> now. Books that contain that essence and point to the essence, they are always relevant no matter what the historical situation is. So I must add, I very much hope that in the year 4000, which would be 2000 years from now, people will not be reading The Power of Now and A New Earth because it won't be necessary anymore. That's my hope. (laughs) But uh, you never know if the shift, if a, a true permanent shift has not happened by then, people would still be reading the power of now in a totally changed historical situation, but it would still be relevant, because that is that is not related to externals. So that's the core then, the discovery within yourself of the level of presence, awareness, the transcendent dimension. Uh, And perhaps we can, as we speak this evening, we can go more deeply into that, what that means, what that is, so that it's not just a concept in your mind, a word, ah, the transcendent dimension, or something to believe in, that's not what it is. It's something to discover that's always there, already, always already there within you, but is overlooked continuously. So I'm not going yet into great detail because I believe that will probably emerge 